Hey guys, I'm the Moha Mechanic, and today we're going to be doing a compression test on this engine here. So, let's get into it. Now, I'll do this step by step, and you can follow along with your car. Um, my car is pretty old, about 40 years old, so it does have a distributor, but yeah. Anyway, the first thing you're going to need is a uh, compression tester obviously. Uh, it just comes with a pressure gauge, a like tube, and um, some connectors that screw in to the spark plug holes. So <clears throat> basically what we're going to be doing is taking off or taking out our spark plugs here and replacing it with that uh, compression tester. Then we're going to crank the engine and it's going to measure the amount of compression in that cylinder. Now, I'm thinking cylinder number three, right in here, I'm thinking that one's going to be low because when I was doing my oil pan gasket and rod bearings, I noticed some coolant dripping from uh, the crankshaft. And that indicated to me that I, will, I have a head gasket leak. So, I'm just doing a compression test to see the state of things, and yeah, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is remove our fuel pump relay, and on this car, it is actually in here, and underneath the dash, where all those relays are, which makes it a little hard to get to. But on most cars, it'll be up in this area somewhere or over there where my battery is it'll be up here um, and you'll have to remove like the lid to the fuse box and it should be in there uh, you can look at your owner's manual or whatnot to find the position of where it is but I've already removed mine uh, it's easier to remove if you use some some pliers if not you're gonna be sitting there for a long time with your fingers trying to wiggle it out and it will not come out. So pliers are a must for that one. Anyway, now that we got our fuel pump relay out, uh, when we crank the engine, it's not gonna actually send any fuel to uh, the cylinders. So that will allow us to test the compression without actually having gas or anything going to the engine so it doesn't like actually start. Because we only want to test compression compressions with like two or three rotations of the pistons or compression strokes um, to actually get an accurate meet reading. So um, I'm gonna reattach my battery here. Okay, that's interesting. But uh, with my battery reconnected, hopefully it's got enough juice in it. It, it's kind of dead, but hopefully it has enough juice in it to actually be able to crank the engine. And we're going to start with cylinder number two, so, or cylinder number one, sorry. We're going to start with cylinder number one. So if you have a distributor, this is easy. You just follow the line back to the first cylinder, pop that out, and then you're going to use a spark plug uh, socket and remove the spark plug. Set that aside and then go grab the compression tester and thread, thread it in there. And then uh, you should be good to go. Let's get our first spark plug removed. So I'm grabbing my 3 8 inch and a spark plug socket. You can tell it's a spark plug socket because it has some rubber on the inside of the uh, socket there. And basically what that's going to do is... When I put it on the spark plug, it will hold the top of it. So when I remove it, I can take it out. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter. But um, in the case of like other cars where the spark plugs are sitting down deeper uh, in the head, uh, you will be able to get this one on there and then pull it out and still have it in the socket, which is nice. So... Let's just remove our, 
spark plug here. Just like that, the uh, spark plug stays in the socket. So we can set the spark plug aside and plop our compression gauge in that cylinder. So after you find the right connector that actually um, is the same size as the spark plug, you want to just pop it in there and tighten it down. You're going to make sure that this is on there pretty tight so that there's no leak, compression leak. So just about there should be good. So now that we've got our um, compression gauge hooked up, I'm going to tilt it just like that so you can see what's going on. Hopefully it doesn't fall over when it actually starts hitting compression. Um, but I'm going to crank the engine uh, and you should see the needle pick up, pick up, pick up. Well, you'll see the needle jump three times. So I'm going to hold the key down for maybe five seconds and then let off. So let's do that now. It's just a tad bit below 150 uh, PSI. So that cylinder one number one done. So let's unscrew this. We can remove <coughs> cylinder number two spark plug. Just like that. And let's get our compression gauge in there. So now that we've got cylinder two all ready, let's do the same thing and start. <laughs> And as you can see here, it's just about the same. Uh, this one looks to be a hair under 145, so I'm gonna say that's 145 PSI. Now we can move on to our third cylinder. And this one, I'm expecting to be lower than all the other ones because I think there's a head gasket leak in uh, cylinder number three. So looking on this one, the spark plug looks a little wet and I believe since this is cylinder number three that that is probably, I don't know, I can't tell for that, but it doesn't look like oil. But I have all reason to believe that that is coolant uh, coming from cylinder number three and that's what I expected. All right, so now let's crank it under cylinder number three. So, on cylinder number three, it is reading once 170, which puzzles me immensely because that is the uh, cylinder that we have the leak, uh, the coolant leak in, and that oil or that spark plug that I pulled out had coolant on it. So very interesting on that one. So let's move on to cylinder number four and that one if it's going by the first two should be around uh, 145 uh, to like 147 around there uh, if it's going to be consistent and we want it to be consistent. So yeah I can definitely tell my head gasket's blown um, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit more, but I'm going to take off the, uh, the cap for the coolant reservoir. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to crank it and you guys are going to see how much compression is going from the cylinder into the, um, coolant system. And the reading on cylinder number three, uh, actually does prove that it's a blown head gasket because um, it was reading so high. And since it was reading so high, it's probably because that there is liquid in there decreasing the volume of the cylinder, which when you decrease the volume of the cylinder, you're gonna increase the amount of pressure. So that's why that one was reading so much higher, uh, just because it has uh, water in it or coolant. So I'll set up my camera here. 
Uh, I'm gonna do cylinder number four again. So I'm gonna start cranking it over. So, yeah. Uh, could you tell I have a head gasket leak? <laughs> From this being like a gushing geyser. Um, compression in this cylinder is actually 160 in number four. So anyway, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, and if you did, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more. Remember, no matter your experience or your skill level, keep on improving.